Welcome to a very busy month of motorsports here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. It is the first week of July and it is hot. It feels like summer finally here in Stafford, Connecticut. Yes, uh, it's in the 90s right now, but thankfully the weather when it comes to precipitation is on our side this week because I felt like we talked about it way too much the previous month or so, but we're looking good for tomorrow. I'm sure when the night comes, it'll cool down a little bit and there's been a lot of hot tempers over the last week or two as a, as a result of the weekly racing grind. When we get all these Fridays in a row done, Kyle, it's tough for these teams. It is, as we are well into the midsummer grind now, and uh, it's the first week of July, first of a, a very busy month here. Are you ready to go for, well, we don't jump the gun too much, but SRX is a week away. It's coming up quick, and the fact that we opened up SRX for the second time, and we've been here all three years, it's awesome, and I'm excited to see the lineup we have. It's a lot of star-studded drivers, current drivers, past drivers, personalities from different racing disciplines. It's going to be a good one, but we got to get through this Friday first with the Open Modifieds. And the GAF Open 80 for the Open Modifieds, and uh, Eric Goodale right now, the driver of the GAF roofing car, the most recent winner here at the Stafford Motor Speedway in an Open Modified. He's always been fast in the Open Modifieds at Stafford, or if you go back, the Modified Tour, but... It was his first victory at the half mile since 2018, and he had to hold off his buddy Glenn Reed. They actually went back and forth once on the track. Glenn Reed got the lead, Goodale got the lead back, and held on to the win. So we'll see if Goodale can repeat. Glenn Reed has been really fast in the open modifies this year. We'll see if Ronnie Williams can get that car going in the right direction. Teddy Hodgden, Woody Pitcat. There's a lot of drivers that are in contention for the win, but right now it seems like Reen and Goodale have been the faster cars. Going to be another banner field for 80 laps for the open modifieds here on Friday night. The SK Modifieds. They put on a wild show mm. last week. I'm looking at Noah Corner skid marks here down the back stretch <laughs> and been to turn number three after his wild ride. But it was a new face, at least for this season, in victory lane. Yeah, Corey DiMatteo got his first win of the year. A bit of a rough stretch the last couple weeks. The previous week, an accident on the last lap of the heat race, but they got the car put back together. Last Friday, back in victory lane, his fourth SK modified win of his career, third with the Hummel 11 team. And he had to hold off Marcello Rafrano, who was in a backup car after his big wreck two weeks ago. And the fact that Marcello said that the backup car is better than his first car, and we know how fast that first car was, Kyle. And I believe he also said the car's been collecting dust. Yes. And they pulled it out uh, for last Friday night, and it finished in the second spot on a great run there. Another driver that has caught my eye the last couple of weeks, I know he's caught your eye as well, Mikey Flynn. Mm -hmm. Very consistent, very quiet toward the front of the field the last month or so. Whenever he hasn't had trouble, he's had a good car. And he talked about teaming up with Stash Petova last year, and it seems like that's made a big difference for that 24 team. Came off a top five finish last week, and he was fighting up there for the podium. Just fell a bit short, but he got a podium earlier this year. He got a top five again. Two in the last three races, he's resulted with a top five finish. We'll see if they can keep that momentum forward. And sits just outside of the top five in the SK Modified Points. In the late models, the streak of different winners is over. We had our first repeater last Friday. And Kevin Gambacorda didn't think he was going to win. He started deep in the Did. field, and he had to miss that big pileup early in the race coming off of turn two, which twisted Tom Fern's car up like it went through a can opener. But Gambacorda, we said, or at least I said before he won the previous week, that even though he was the point leader, he wasn't up there battling for the win like we saw last year on a more consistent basis. He got the first one out of the way, and then he got past Jacob Perry in the uh, late part of the feature last week to get the win. Jacob Perry was up there leading laps during the race. He and Adam Gray had a bit of a tussle. Adam was up front for a bit as well. But Gamba Corda, the point leader, extends his mark, especially after the bad night Tom Fern had. Yeah, it has a bit of a cushion. 20 points, very consistently, again, very consistently quiet, except for the last two weeks where he's won. And that's because other drivers have had pretty big issues. Yeah, well, that lap two pileup was massive. You had Vecchio. On top of Tom Fern's left rear, it collected Chris Meyer, John Blake, Wayne Corey Jr., who bounced back for a top five finish anyways. But yeah, that's a big blow for Tom Fern. He's had a couple weeks this year where he's just found himself in trouble, not really of his own doing, but that's the big thing. With this field, it's such a tight field. You have 
18 to 20 cars, and over half of them have a chance of winning. As we mentioned, they had six different winners in the first six races, and you still got guys like Zach Robinson, Michael Ray, and Wayne Corey, who haven't won yet this year, that very well have a chance of doing so. So you got to avoid the trouble, you got to keep it clean, and that's how you stay in the championship hunt. It's a tight field, it's a deep field, and they'll be back for 30 laps on Friday night. You mentioned tempers earlier, the SK Light modified, mm. right at the front of the field last week at the end of uh, 20 laps for them. Yeah, Tyler Chapman and George Bissett Jr., they tangled a few weeks prior, leading to Tyler Chapman spinning around. This time around, Tyler Chapman kind of ran Bissett up the track with a few laps to go, actually coming to the white flag, to take the lead, and he never looked back. Bissett not exactly happy with it. Tyler Chapman said, well, I didn't want him to win. I did what I did after what happened a couple weeks ago. Two sides to every story, and then there's the middle ground. So we'll see how that carries on, but Tyler Chapman has really shown a lot of speed in the last few weeks. That's his second victory in the last three races. So that 41 team's got it figured out. They've avoided trouble. When you have a 34-car field, avoiding trouble is half the battle. George Bissett Jr., fast again. Brian Sullivan, quietly finding his way to a podium mm -hmm. finish. That's just the way Sullivan is, quiet and consistent. But the driver who finished fourth got a much-needed good run after a tough start to the year. And out, of course, is Amanda West. She couldn't uh, get out of her own way for one reason or another the first month of the season. New car to her, a successful car on this half mile, though, over the last two seasons. Yes, Todd Owens championship winning SK in 2021 and 22. Amanda West got the benefit of starting towards the front. That's big in of itself because the further you are in the front, the less chaos you have to get through to get up there. So she led a lot of laps, led the most laps, and got that fourth place finish. And also Nick Covey, first career SKLI top five. 16 laps led for Amanda West last Friday night. Maybe this Friday will be the day she gets to Napa Victory Lane. In the limited late model, speaking of finally getting the Victory Lane and finding some good luck, Devin Jensik got there for the first time in 2023. Yeah, the first few weeks we mentioned how it just seemed like the speed was not there for that 23 team. Then they found that speed, and the car was wrecked at the yeah. end of the 30-lap feature. The next week, mechanical problems took him out early in the race, and now he got a fourth and victory lane last week. Went wire to wire, dominated the 20-lap feature, which went caution-free, but not quite incident-free, and we'll touch on that later. But big on Devin Jensik. That's a confidence booster for that team, and we'll see if they can keep that momentum going. Is it a one-time thing, or will they be fast and competing for the victory every single week? In the big picture, Jeremy Lavoy was right on Jensik's back bumper, fell a little bit short, got second, but he's the point leader because... Matt Clement and Kevin Cormier played a bit of bumper cars in the last few laps of last week's feature. Clement ended up spinning. Cormier ended up black flagged. So as a result, Clement still has a two-point edge over Cormier, but Jeremy Lavoie is ahead of both of yeah, them. Closed everybody up onto the top two because both of those cars were involved in an incident right here in turn number three on the final corner of the final lap of last week's feature. We wrap up with the street stocks, and I guess it was the uh, same story, different verse. Last week uh, in the Mid-State Site Development Firecracker 30, an extended feature, same face in victory lane, Ryan Waterman, five for seven this year. That's crazy. That's insane. Five for seven. It's tough to win five races in a year, yep. let alone to do that in the first seven races of the season. Travis Hydar, who won the other two races this year, finished second. And then Johnny Walker returned to the podium with a third. So it's still those two, the 31 and the 11 out in front. Travis Downey was up there, but he got in a spin later on the race. Aaron Plemons was up there battling for the lead, but Waterman pulled away. I don't know, Kyle. We just got to figure this out. Who has something for the 11 and the 31, especially as we approach the second half of the year? They are no doubt in a class of their own, at least in the first half of this season. I like Burt Willett last week. New ride, new colors, new owner, and uh, just finished outside of the top five and six. Still yes. third in points. Yeah, he's third in points. Hopefully he can keep a ride going for the rest of the year after he and Jet Motorsports separated. He'll be back this Friday driving Kyle Johnson's car, so we'll see what he can do. Build off that solid run of a sixth-place finish, see if he can get a couple more and get back to that podium. And those are just some of the storylines as we go into another Friday night of racing here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Hope you can join us here in person. All the action gets underway at 6 o'clock Eastern time. But if you can't be here, you can tune us in live on Flow Racing.